Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Kit and today is Saturday, September 12th, 2020. Thank you guys for joining me today. How is everyone doing? I hope you guys are all happy and healthy and staying safe. Now it's been a while since I've been on to talk to you guys. And the reason why is because I was in a funk and it was a really bad funk because I did not, I lost my mojo, first of all, and then I didn't have any motivation to work on any of my crafts and I just did not want to be bothered with it. So I didn't really do much. Um, I think that has to do with the kids learning from home. They're all doing the remote learning. And I think we just haven't adjusted to that yet. It's only been a few weeks and we have to uh, figure out a routine or a schedule and then everything will get straightened out and everything should be okay after that. And then also my blood pressure is still elevated and I actually have to go back to the doctor in two weeks and she's gonna check on that. But then also, I'm having skin issues now. I am breaking out like crazy and I'm 40 years old and I'm breaking out like I'm a teenager again and I do not like it at all. And that's gonna be taken care of as well. I also have a an appointment with the dermatologist in two weeks. So the same day I go see my uh, primary care doctor, I also get to see a dermatologist and hopefully they can fix all this because I'm just not happy with the way my skin looks right now. And it used to be a lot clearer than this and just lately I've just been breaking out. I don't know if it's because of my hormones changing or it might be because of stress, I don't know, but it needs to get taken care of pretty soon because I am not happy and that's one of the other reasons why I haven't been on to record anything um, I just don't like the breakouts on my face and it doesn't look really good on camera um, speaking of skin problems if you guys don't know we have a Siberian Husky my husband has had her since she was a puppy and she's 13 years old now I believe but she also has a skin problem so my husband took her to the vet on Friday and the vet had mentioned that or said that maybe something bit her and irritated her skin. So now she has like a patch of fur missing from her side. It's like right along her rib cage and she has like a red and raw area of her skin exposed and we just have to put ointment on it. And then she also has to take like a pill orally so I'm not even sure how we're going to get her to take that pill. Um, she usually just eats dry dog food. And I was thinking about buying her a can of wet dog food and then hiding the pill in there. And hopefully she'll take it that way. I'm not sure what to do. So if you guys have pets and have pets that had to take pills before, um, give me some advice because I have no clue how to give the dog the pill. So <laughs> hopefully she'll take it in the wet dog food because if not, I don't know what else to do. Unless we break open the pill and then maybe put like the the medicine on the inside of the pill, like maybe in some like human food to feed her. I don't know what to do. So any suggestions would be very helpful and I'd really appreciate that. So if you have any suggestions, you can leave it down in the comments below. All right, so you guys are here for the yarny things, right? So let's get started with that. And if you guys can see, I have rearranged my craft room and did a little bit of remodeling. I thought of this great idea about putting shelves up on the wall behind me because I don't use that wall for anything. It usually had a, not a poster, but a board up there where the kids hung their um, drawings and stuff. So I took that down and I wanted to put shelves that expand the width of this wall and my husband helped me helped me with that so we went to Menards a few weeks ago we grabbed um, we bought six pine boards we brought them home sanded them painted them and then mounted them on the wall and that's what it looks like so now I have way more room for yarn and I love it it's not perfect because we are not professional carpenters but I don't care I really love it and now I can fit a lot more yarn down here the only thing left that I would like to do is, you see the wood boards behind me, the paneling? I wanna paint that white. So not tonight, cause it's already late. It's like 6 p.m. here in Chicago. 
but maybe tomorrow I'll get up early and I might have the girls help me paint that wall white. So next time I film and I'm facing this way, you might see a white wall instead of the wood wall. And I can't wait to get started on that because I'm sure it's going to need a couple coats of paint, maybe primer than paint, but we already have the white paint. So I will try just painting it maybe two coats and it should look really nice and it'll brighten up the room some. So that's what I've been doing as well for the past few weeks. And if you guys are interested, I will definitely give you a tour, uh, just a quick little tour of my craft room once I have it all organized, because right now it's still a mess and I still have yarn that are in bags. But I did move my craft table from that side of the room to this side of the room. And then my sewing table is in here. It's right next to me. And then I even have a papa -san chair in here so I can spend more time in here crocheting and knitting and my kids can even hang out if I'm sewing so it's more functional now and I'm loving it so far all right so what have I purchased these past few weeks I actually went to Michael's um not last week but the week before because Michael sent me a little booklet with some coupons in it and one of those coupons was a 50% off coupon and I decided to use it and this is what I bought with it so I would not have normally picked this up this is a Karen anniversary cake I would not have purchased this if I did not have that 50% off coupon and these are originally $34.99 and I thought that was way too much so if I did not have that coupon, I would not have purchased this. But since I had that coupon, I purchased this and only paid $19.02 with tax. So I thought that was a good deal. So I only picked up one. The colorway on this one is called Blueberry Bash. I'm not going to go over all the specs and everything with you guys because I'm pretty sure you've seen it all already. But I am planning on knitting up a blanket with this now today while we were out and about I asked my husband if we can stop at Michael's again because I wanted to pick up a second anniversary cake because I had another 50% off coupon and this is the cake that I bought with that one the Karen anniversary cake and this one is called blueberry birthday so what I'm thinking of is I am going to knit a giant blanket I'm gonna use both cakes of yarn and I'm gonna keep on knitting until all the yarn is gone so I'm gonna knit two rows with this color and then knit two rows with this color and then I'm just gonna alternate the cakes until the blanket is like gigantic and I think it's gonna be pretty and I think these cakes match I was actually looking for the purple one um, cause I bought this one first and then I just bought this one today. So I was actually looking for the purple one, but they only had one cake left and it was all messed up. So I didn't buy it, but these will still go really good together. And that is my plan for that. And if you have the Michaels app on your phone, I think they're running a contest. Um, you have to make a project using a Karen cake and then submit a photo. And then if they pick you as a winner, uh, for the, grand prize winner I believe you win like a hundred cakes a hundred Karen cakes and then they're gonna pick four winners um for 50 Karen cakes so if you haven't seen that go check it out because I think it ends um October 10th so if you want to get in on that you have to get started on your project right now so as soon as I'm done recording this video I am going to start knitting up my blanket with this and I am going to submit that to for the contest just to see if you know i i'll have a chance to win if i submit a photo so if i win i win if i don't i don't i just thought it was a fun contest to enter so if you guys are interested um check out your michael's app it should be on there um, i will be starting on my project today all right so what else have i bought nothing much but i did have i do have a happy mail oh i forgot all about my premiere order so let me tell you this little story about my Premiere order. I placed an order on Premiere about four weeks ago, and it was a small order. I think I spent like $33 and some change, and I bought three cakes and like maybe six skeins of yarn because they were on sale. And this is what happened. I got an email from Premiere saying that my package was delivered. 
So I was at work that day, it was a Friday, and my mom and my girls were home. So if it was delivered, my mom would have uh, picked up the package from the front stoop. But when I got home, there was no package. I was expecting a package and there wasn't one. So I tracked it and it still showed that it was delivered. So I decided to contact FedEx. Now, by the time I got home from work on Friday, it was already like 7 p.m. So I called FedEx. FedEx and nobody answered the phone so I had to call them the next day which was Saturday and I actually spoke to one of their um, employees there maybe a customer service representative but he said that he was going to track down the package for me and to wait for a call and they'll let me know what's going on with my package well I'm waiting and a week has gone by and still no call from FedEx and no package so I decided to contact Premier to let them know that it shows my package has been delivered but I have not received it so they were gonna send a claim to FedEx I guess for the price of the package and um, Premier said they'll ship me another order my same order just they'll ship it again so they did and I finally got it now this is what I think happened to my package the first time I ordered from Premier which was I don't know maybe five six months ago um, the delivery driver from FedEx actually delivered it to my neighbor who lives one street over and she was kind enough to walk it over here, ring our doorbell and let my husband know that she got my package instead of them delivering it here, they delivered it to her house. So she was honest and brought my package to me. This time around, I believe whoever got my package kept my package so now they got free yarn but I do have my yarn so that all that that's all that matters and I don't know if I'm going to order from Premier again just for that reason because I've ordered a few times and there's always been something wrong with my order um, so I don't know I really love Premier yarns and if they keep I know this time it's not Premier's fault it's actually the FedEx drivers um, faults for not delivering it to the right house but every time I order from Premier there's always something going on and um, my husband's like don't order from Premier anymore because something's always happening with your package but um, this isn't going to deter me I will give them another shot and hopefully this time it'll get delivered to my house instead of someone else's house but anyways that's my little story Oh, and this time um, I emailed them to see if they can you have it delivered through USPS, and they did. They had it delivered through USPS, and I got my package. So thank you, all you USPS employees. Um, I really do appreciate you guys. All right, so what did I order from Premier? I ordered a couple of their Premier Serenity Chunky Yarns because they were on sale for $2 a skein. And this is a bulky five, which I'm not really a big fan of, but I do like this yarn a lot. So I bought two of these. And this one is in the Colorway Almond. And I bought these because I want to knit up some hats because these make beautiful hats. And I have two of these, which is called Pink Candy. And then I bought two of these, which is called Amethyst. And if you guys aren't familiar with Premier Serenity Chunky, I'll tell you a little bit about it before I move on. Um, this one is a bulky number five, as I mentioned. It's 100 grams with 109 yards, and it's 100% acrylic. Uh, machine wash warm, gentle cycle, tumble dry on low. And this is made in Turkey. So really pretty, really soft yarn. And again, bulky fives are not my favorite, but I do really like this yarn. That's why I bought them. And plus they were on sale for $2 a skein. And then the last one I bought in the Serenity Chunky is this colorway and it's called Stormy. And I don't know why I chose this one. It actually looked prettier online. I mean, it's not bad. I'd still make a hat and it would be a nice hat for a, a boy or even a man so or even a girl if you like blues and browns but that was what I got from the for the premier chunky premier serenity chunky and then the other yarn I bought is the coffee shop yarn which I have never tried before and this is actually my first time uh, feeling this yarn it's really soft it's a lightweight three and 
100 grams, 284 yards, 85% acrylic, 15% wool. So now I need to figure out what, what I'm going to make with this. Um, it is in the colorway Sidamo. S-I-D-A-M-O. Sidamo. Is that how you pronounce that? But it's really pretty. And it's really soft and light. And I have three cakes in that color. And the other cakes all the way over there. So I got three of those and that was it for my premiere order. It was just a small order. I wanted to try some of these. Um, these were on sale for $8 for a bag of three. So three for $8. That's a good price. And then these were $2 per skein. That's a good price as well. So I got to figure out what I'm going to make with this. But all those Serenity Chunkies, I'm going to knit up hats with those. So that was it for my premiere order. And now on to my Happy Mail that I got from a friend. So I have um, a Yarny friend of ours here on, on YouTube. Um, she's a subscriber, a Yarny friend. And she had emailed me. And she wanted to send me a package of yarn. And I would accept only if I can send her something. So I still have her box. I haven't sent it yet because shipping is a tad expensive um she is from iceland i believe and she lives in denmark so sending a package from the u.s to denmark is a little costly so i'm slowly saving up for that but i think next saturday i will go ahead and send out her package and hopefully she likes everything i picked out for her because i had a hard time deciding what to put in her box and she requested some red heart and some premier yarns and i put some in there and some other goodies. So hopefully she'll enjoy everything I put in there. All right, so this is what she sent me. And I need your help with some of this because some of this yarn, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Because um, some of them, there's this particular one that I think is really cool, but I just don't know what to do with. So I might need your help. Okay, so she sent me some yarn from Hobby because she does live in Denmark and Hobby is based out of Denmark. But she gave me this Cotton King's Twirls Nation. And I am definitely making a shawl with this yarn. Fall is coming up in a couple weeks. And this would make a beautiful shawl for the fall. So I really like that. Um, these are typically not my colors. But like I said, fall's coming. And this would make a pretty shawl. So I'm making a shawl with that one. If not this year, then next year for sure. She also sent me some Twister Solid, and this one is in a gray color, and then she also sent me one in white, and these are 55% cotton, 45% acrylic, and 437 yards. This is 100 grams, and this is a fine number two, and I think I am going to make shawls with these. I might mix these two together just to make like a neutral color shawl. Or I might even use the white and put it with a different yarn and then use the gray and put it with a different yarn. I'm not sure yet. Um, I don't know what to do. I can always order from Hobby and get a couple of other different colors as well just to mix it up a little bit. And she also sent me this one, which is called Lily. Now this one is really soft and the color reminds me of like a really like a vintage gold. It's really pretty, really soft. Um, typically not my colors, but it's still really pretty. This one is a fine number two. Let's see. Everything else is in a different language, so I can't really tell you much about this. But it is 70% viscose, viscose and 30% linen. And I have only the one skein. So I really don't know what to do with this. So if you guys have any ideas, let me know. And then now on to this bag. Um, I put everything in a bag, but she sent me... Let me start off with these little skeins first. Um, I am not going to pronounce this because I will not get that right. But you guys go ahead and look at that. And this is Icelandic wool. So it is made in Iceland. And... I'm pretty sure this is 100% wool because it does feel like 100% wool. It's a little scratchy. And by a little, I mean like you can't make a scarf with it and just 
wear it around your neck because this is um, pretty itchy and scratchy. I don't know what to make with this. I mean, you can make a scarf if only you pair it with a really, really soft yarn. And that's what I think I might do. The other thing that I might do is crochet some Christmas ornaments for my Christmas tree with these. So she sent me one in this color, which is like a turquoise color or teal color. Um, these are 50 grams with 273 yards per skein. And um, there's a lot of yardage because this yarn is really, really thin. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's really, really thin. And you can see the wool fibers just sticking up from that. So I'm pretty sure it's 100% wool. And if it says on here, I can't tell because it's in a different language. But she sent me one in this color. One in like a heather gray color. One in like a charcoal heather color. One in a cream color. One in a pink color. And then the last one is one in like this really pretty purple color. So if you guys have any ideas on what I can make with this, please let me know. I believe she actually knitted a sweater with these yarns. Um, it was like a fair isle sweater. She actually sent me a picture of the sweater she knitted and the person who was wearing it. And that sweater turned out really, really gorgeous. And I can't do fair isle. <laughs> I can barely knit, but I definitely can't do Fair Isle, and um, it was a really pretty sweater. So if I were to make a sweater or anything wearable with this yarn, I would definitely have to soft or pair it up with a softer yarn. All right, and the last thing that she sent me is this right here, and I am not going to pronounce that, but she sent me like eight of these little discs of fiber. I'm gonna call it fiber because I'm not sure if it's considered yarn. And I'll show you one that's already been opened. So let me set this bag aside. Okay, this is what it looks like. It comes in like this disc form. Can you guys see that? So I got two of these colors, um, one, like two in the red, one in like a teal, one in like a charcoal heather, um, a purple or maroonish color, and like a navy blue color. But this is really, really cool. And the thing about this is I don't know what to do with it because the fibers like pull apart really easily. You see that? So I'm not sure if I'm supposed to knit or crochet with it like that or if this disc of wool is meant to be spun and then plied together to make yarn. I'm not sure um, what to do with this one. So if you guys have any ideas or know what this disc of fiber is, please let me know. And like I said, I'm pretty sure it's 100% wool because it feels like wool and it's definitely wool. But let me know what I can do with it. I think um, if no one knows, I will have to email her and see if she can give me some ideas on what to make with this one so it was really cool seeing this and like i said i'm just not sure what to make with it so if you guys have any ideas please leave it down in the comments below but it is really cool um i kind of messed up this disc but it's cool so thank you so much i'm not gonna say your name on here but she is a yarny friend i'm pretty sure to a majority of our channels and like I said, she's from Iceland, I believe, and she lives in Denmark. And she just wanted to send me a nice little gift. So thank you so, so much. Uh, she also sent me a beautiful card and this beautiful bookmark that's actually in a book I'm reading right now. Um, so I can't show you guys that because I don't know where that book is. It's probably upstairs in our bedroom. So that was my little happy mail. And that was exciting. I enjoy getting packages in the mail. Let's go on to my knit crate. Um, I didn't show you guys August's knit crate because I haven't been on in a while. So I can show you August's and then I can also show you September's because it actually came in the mail today. And I have them both right here. So let me show you August's first. 
and you've probably already seen this on everyone's channel but i just wanted to show you um the colorway that i received um we got the i don't know what i did with it but um our little extra was like a cork coaster which i'm not too impressed with um and then this is the booklet for the, the month of august and i'm not gonna go over everything with you guys because you've probably already seen it but i am not making this shrug or little sweater i'm not sure what you call it i'm not making that but this is the yarn that i receive for august's knit crate and i think this color is gorgeous it's vitalana um linen jewel and the colorway is midsummer rose it's 50 percent superwash merino 30% linen and 20% silk, 100 grams fingering weight with 400 yards. Really soft yarn. I like it a lot. And I just adore this color. It's gorgeous. I like that one. So I like the yarn. I'm not too happy about the extra. And I'm not too impressed with the pattern. So um, that was my August's knit crate. So I'll set that aside and I will show you my September knit crate, which came in the mail today. So September's knit crate. So let me dig to the bottom and here's the inspirations booklet. Which is weird because it also says August 2020. I thought it was supposed to be September's. So there's a typo already. And I like the scarf that she's wearing in the front there made with the orange colored yarn that's pretty so I might knit that it has cable work in it and I've never done cables but you know what I might try so I will look through this booklet later I don't want to go through everything with you guys um, because I'm sure somebody else will show it but I might make that scarf we'll see but like I said this is September's and the booklet says August 2020 so there's a typo and this is the colorway that I got for my September box and it's the orange colorway, which I'm not a big fan of orange, but I do like that one. It's bright and vibrant. If I make that scarf, um, I might wear it because I don't know if orange looks good on me or not. But I don't know. You guys tell me. But it's a really soft wool. And let me tell you about this yarn. It is Audine Wool Sleek by Knit Crate. Um... It is in the colorway Bliss, which is this orange colorway. It is 55% fine merino wool, 30% baby alpaca, 15% mulberry silk, 220 yards, 100 grams, machine wash, gentle cycle, lay flat to dry. And it's really soft. It does have 30% alpaca. So um, I've worked with alpaca yarn before and it's made my hands itch. But we'll see if this one makes my hand itch or not. I'm um, just touching it right now. I don't feel any itchiness, but it's because I'm not working with it. I'm just holding it. But I will find out. I might have to um, gift that to someone if I can't work with it. But it's really soft yarn, and I do like it. And you know what, you guys? I actually canceled my knit crate. So this September box is my last uh, box for with knit crate. I decided to cancel it because I'm just not happy with Knit Crate anymore. It's nothing to do with their yarn because their yarn is gorgeous. It's a lot of things. Um, it's $24.99 a month, which I'm okay with. But I really don't make projects using that yarn. And I feel like it's a waste of money if I'm just buying the yarn. It's just sitting on my shelves and I'm not using it. So I'm canceling it for now. And maybe eventually, like sometime next year... Or the year after that, if I want to go back, I'll go back. But as of right now, it's canceled. And September was my last month. I redeemed some stash points and I got $10 off that box. So I only paid $14.99 for September's Knit Crate box. And I'm pretty happy with my decision. I don't, I'll miss them, but I won't miss them that much. So I'm okay with that. And I just haven't been happy with them lately. I don't like a majority of their patterns and then their little extras have been um lacking lately and i forgot to show you the extra in this month's i totally forgot about that but this is the extra in this month's um knit crate which is like a little sun stitch marker which i think is cute 
So let me see if I can show you guys. It's a little sun and it looks really cute. So I will definitely use that one. Um, it matches the yarn. So that is actually really cute. Um, so I do like that one. And I don't know about the color of the yarn, but I will work it up and see how it works up. But it's a really soft yarn. Um, if it was a different color, I might like that more, but it's really nice and soft. All right, so on to my Mary Maxim Knit Club. I did not show you guys um, the August one. Like I said, I haven't been on, but I do have my September's Mary Maxim Knit Club. And if you watch Ross from um, Smells Like Yarn, you probably already seen this but I will show you guys anyway just in case you guys don't watch Ross but I will link his channel down below if you guys don't know who Ross is but I'm pretty sure most of you do um, this is Louisa Harding and this pattern is for this hooded cowl which I think I am going to knit because I think it's gorgeous and let me show you guys the yarn because the yarn is absolutely gorgeous now this pattern is called Crater Lake and it seems simple enough i'll have to the pattern it's only a one page pattern so it can't be that difficult so i will definitely try it out but this is the yarn that i receive in this month's kit and i'm really excited about it i think it's beautiful and soft and the name of the yarn is called luisa harding picturissimo if that's how you pronounce it but it's an erin weight yarn the colorway number is 218 and the colorway name is called The Scream. Look at those gorgeous colors. I think it's absolutely beautiful. It's like a roving style yarn, but it has all these beautiful colors in it. And that's going to make a beautiful cowl. So I am definitely knitting up that cowl. This has 75% wool, 25% viscose. It's 100 grams, 164 yards, 3.5 ounces. And it says it's a medium four, which is a thicker medium four. It's an Aran weight. It goes from like an Aran weight to a four weight yarn. Um, like I said, it's a roving style yarn. But look at the colors in there. Isn't that just gorgeous? I will definitely make that cowl. And again, here is the picture of that cowl so I will try it and see how it works up but I'm very excited about that and this is definitely worth it this month because I believe these retail for $19.95 per ball of yarn and these are on sale at webs I think for $10.99 and um, my kit costs less than $23 with shipping so I'm really excited about that. And the one thing about Mary Maxim is, is I think their prices are reasonable. And I get to try yarn that I would have never bought on my own if it did not come in this kit. So that's the one thing about them. And I get to try yarns that I've never tried before. And just every month is a surprise. And it's not like um, Knit Crate where you can preview what you're going to get. But it, every month is a surprise. And then the patterns are always different. And that's the one thing I enjoy about Mary Maxim. So if you guys are interested in the Mary Maxim Knit or Crochet Club, I will go ahead and link it down below. Um, check it out if you want to check it out. But I really enjoy my knit club and I think it's a keeper. And I will keep doing this every month. So that is it for um, new things that I have acquired these past few weeks. So if you guys are ready... I am ready to show you all my finished objects. Now, I told you I was in a funk, so I really haven't had much time to do um, a lot of knitting or crocheting, but I don't know how I did it, but I did manage to finish some, I think like five items. So let's get started with some of these smaller items and then we'll get onto the bigger items. So I have knitted four hats and let me show you um, I'm going to show you the Ross hats first because I am loving Ross's hat pattern. I think it's just simple, it's fun, and it depends on the yarn you use, but it, every hat looks different, and that's what I like about it. So every time I knit a Ross hat, I try to use different kinds of yarn just to see how it knits up. But the first hat I made 
is the Ross hat and this one is using Lion Brand Mandela Ombre in the colorway Happy. So Mandela Ombre is like the cakes of yarn here. And this one had like the pinks and the purples and the blues and the greens in it. And it's called Happy. And I had um, a cake left. I made my daughter Madison a mandala vest. I believe it was sometime last year. And I pulled out a second cake because I just needed about a yard or so just to finish it off. And I had that cake left over and I didn't know what to do with it. So I decided just to knit up a hat. And I still have a lot of that cake left. So I decided to knit another hat. And this is the second hat I knitted. Now this hat, I did not follow a pattern. Um, just whatever popped in my head, that's what I did. And it's like a slouchy beanie with some um, texture there. I thought it turned out cute. I'm not too happy about the top part. That's why I hit it with the pom-pom, but it's a slouchy hat and I think it looks cute. It's not perfect, but um, it looks cute, I think. So that's my slouchy hat no pattern and the results are not bad so i will take it off her head and i will show you guys what it looks like so there it is i was just doing something funky up here and then i thought it turned out cute i will um probably donate this or if madison wants to wear it she can have it um like i said i didn't use a fat pattern for that i kind of just came up with it on my own and that's what it looks like compared to the first Ross hat I made. So it's a little bit bigger because it's meant to be slouchy. Um, so that's how that one turned out. And I use up most of the cake of the mandala ombre. So this is two hats out of one mandala cake. And I still have more of that cake left. And I think I'm going to be able to make like a toddler size hat out of the rest of that cake. So one mandala ombre cake will make like three hats. So that's exciting. So those are two hats that I have finished. And then I made another Ross hat. And this one is using some knit crate yarn. I was just saying that I don't really use any of the knit crate yarns that I receive, but I did use one and that's this one right here. And this one is called the Vita Lana Heathered Sock Yarn. And this is the one and only time I switched from the regular knit crate to the sock crate and I received this colorway and I just wasn't happy with the sock crate either. So I switched back to the regular knit crate. Well, I got this colorway in that box and it's called the Wisteria and it's 40% merino wool, 40% Peruvian highland wool and 20% nylon. It's fingering weight with 436 yards. So I had caked this up maybe four or five months ago and I was originally going to make a shawl and I changed my mind and then the yarn just sat here and I decided to make the Ross hat using um, his fingering weight pattern. So that's what I did. And here's that hat. I think it turned out really pretty and I like the way it looks. It turned out great. So I'm happy with that one. So there is another Ross hat. And like I said, you guys, his pattern is really simple to follow. And even if you're a new knitter, you'll get it because I still consider myself a new knitter and um, I'm still learning how to read knit patterns. And it's not as hard as I thought it was going to be. And I knit one more hat, knitted one more hat. And this is actually not the Ross hat. It's a different hat pattern. And this one is called the Citrus Hat. And I found this pattern on Ravelry and it was a free download. So if you guys are interested, I will link it down below so you guys can check out this hat pattern. It is also a knitted hat pattern. So what I'm going to do is put it on the mannequin head so you guys can see it. But this one came out smaller than what I had planned. I actually made the adult small size. This pattern comes in five sizes. It includes the baby size, a child size, like, um, no, baby size, toddler size, a child slash teen size, adult small, and then an adult large. I decided to knit up the adult small and it's actually really small. It looks bigger on the mannequin head, but look at how beautiful that looks. I thought that was gorgeous and I love the pattern so far. I'm not a big fan of the decreasing for the crown because you're doing a lot of purling. But other than that, 
it's a really nice easy pattern and i enjoy knitting this hat and i will definitely knit up another one um next time i do it though i'm gonna knit the adult large but i like that they have all these different sizes for different size head circumferences so that one turned out really pretty and the yarn i'm using for this one is yarn b glowing in the colorway boat ride and this yarn was uh some yarn that i got on clearance at hobby lobby but i definitely like the way it knitted up and the yarn is like marled with two different colored um yarns like twisted together to give that marl look to it really pretty i think this is my favorite color like the purple and like uh, minty green color that's my favorite so that is the last hat that i knitted and knitting hats are like my new favorite thing right now i enjoy knitting a lot and hats are quick and easy so that's why i like to knit a lot of hats plus that helps me with my knitting skills um helps me practice with my tension and just you know knitting in the round so that's why i've been knitting so many hats and plus someone gets to benefit from it because they can get a free hat because i'm probably gonna donate a majority of that because i don't wear hats Okay, so on to my next finished object. Um, you guys, if you guys watched my last episode, um, I was talking about, well, I've been talking about this for a few episodes, but this is the cardigan that I am knitting for my daughter, Sage. And this is a pattern that I bought off of Etsy for $5.50. And the shop name is called the Velvet Acorn. And the designer's name is Heidi May. And she has these beautiful patterns on in her Etsy shop, and I love them. I can probably buy them all. One day I will. But this is a beautiful button-up cardigan sweater with a hood. And I bought this one because I wanted to knit my daughter Sage a sweater. And I showed you guys the progress last time, but I finally finished the sweater, and this is what it looks like. So there are a few spots where I messed up, so I'm not going to point them out. But I love the buttons on here. I chose a gray button to kind of go with this ice blue color. And this yarn I used is called Lion Brand Feels Like Butter, which is really, really soft. And you know what? I did not block this, and I wish I would have blocked it first before I added the buttons. But either way, the sweater turned out really pretty. I like the way it knitted up and the pattern was really easy to follow. I understood everything and this is actually my first knitted garment. So I'm very proud of it. And there's the hood and the back of the sweater and I like the way it turned out. So it's really, really nice and hopefully she can fit into it because the last time she tried it on, um, it fit her pretty good. So I'm going to wash it, block it um, and have her try it on to see if it'll fit her. So I like this one. It was my first knitted sweater. I'm very proud of it. And I didn't do a bad job for this being my first sweater. So there is that all finished. And if you guys know of a pullover sweater pattern um, that I can knit for myself, you can leave that pattern down below as well. Just give me the name of the pattern or a link to it and I will check it out because right now I want to cast on stitches for a sweater for myself but I just don't have a pattern and if you guys watch Gary from Urban Yarns he showcased a sweater that he knitted for his niece and I thought that sweater was absolutely gorgeous he had um, combined a bunch of different yarns and that sweater had like purple in it I just I don't know the purple caught my attention and just the way he paired up the yarns together just made that sweater like really special I really like that sweater so I was going to use that technique and knit myself like somewhat of a scrappy sweater um, just to have that look and I really I really like that sweater so if you guys have or know of a sweater pattern that's knit from the top down I prefer top down but it could be from the bottom up as well um, you can leave it down below and I will check it out and take a look at it so I don't mind paying for a pattern so if it's a pay for pattern um, just leave a link to the Etsy shop or the Ravelry page and I will check it out and um, I might pick something that I like I've been looking on Etsy myself and there's 
a lot of sweaters that are made with bulky yarn and I don't want to knit up a sweater with bulky yarn. I was actually wanting to knit one up with worsted weight yarn. So if the pattern calls for worsted weight yarn, that would be ideal. So I'm looking for a sweater that's knitted with worsted weight yarn because I want to pair up some fingering weight yarn because I have some hand dyed yarn that I want to use to pair it up with a different yarn and just to see if it'll go together and hopefully that'll knit up a beautiful sweater. So that's going to be my next project coming up pretty soon because fall is just right around the corner and I want to get started on the sweater before winter hits. So that is my plans for that. And I will definitely make another um, cardigan for my daughter Madison because I think she wants one too. So that is my sweater. And then my last finished object is a shawl. It's a crocheted shawl. And you guys have seen this in my last uh, episode. But this one is the Sugar Plum Shawl. And this is a pattern that I bought off of Etsy for $6.00. And the designer's name is Rachie Nguyen, I believe, because her shop name is Rachie Nguyen Designs. And she designed this gorgeous shawl. And at first, when I started making the shawl, I had a hard time reading the pattern because all the words were jumbled together. So I will show you an example right now, just a tiny example. So this is row 17. As you can see, all the words are like jumbled together and I had a hard time following the written version of the pattern but the great thing about this pattern is it has the written version and the charts in there so what I did was I read whatever row I was on I read it and then I referred back to the chart to actually crochet up the shawl so that worked out really well for me and the shawl is gorgeous I wish that I would have used a different color yarn because this yarn is not my favorite color and I don't even know why I bought it in the first place. But this is using Yarn B Rainbow Rhapsody in the colorway Crimson Poppies. And this is all I have left of that cake of yarn. Um, if you're not familiar with this, I bought it at Hobby Lobby. It's 60% cotton, 40% acrylic, and it has 918 yards and it's a super fine number one. So this took me a while to make this shawl just because it's such thin yarn and like this shawl is like a 12 row repeat. So every time I did a repeat that would take me a couple hours to do the 12 row repeat. So this is what the shawl looks like. So let me make sure I'm showing you the right side. I mean there isn't a wrong side or right side but I can tell the side is more of the right side. But this is what it looks like. And I think it's the perfect size. It's beautiful. It's lacy. And I love the design in there. Like I said, it took me a little while just because it's such a thin yarn. But I didn't mind. <laughs> it really turned out nice. So this is how I would wear my shawls. Like a little scarf. And I think this turned out gorgeous. So what do you guys think? So this is the Sugar Plum Shawl by Rachie Nguyen Designs. If you guys are interested, I will link that down below. It turns out beautiful. And I'm going to make a couple more of these. So you guys see this yarn art flower yarn that I got from Hobium. I am going to make three of these shawls in all those different colorways. And I really like it. So I paid $6 for the pattern and I'm going to get my money's worth for the $6 pattern. But it's really pretty shawl. I love the pattern. Like I said, it's complicated at first, but once you get used to it and you get going, it's not that complicated at all. So I will definitely make a few more shawls. And I think I might get started on one soon, but I have things that I want to make first. All right, so let's talk about... Um, my works in progress. So I have a few things that I'm working on and a couple new things that I didn't show you guys last time because I just started them. But let me show you what I've been working on in knit. And I showed you guys last time I was working on the Berkeley scarf. It's not done, but I was on this um, reddish orange section and I had to knit like 60 more rows. Well, I knitted the 60 rows and I went to the stripe portion and now I am on the second ball of yarn which is using the variegate, variegated color ball here 
and I really like these colors together. I think they're gorgeous and I really like this yarn. This is Ella Ray Sunkissed Speckled and I think this one is called Hawaiian Sunset but I really like this colorway and I like this yarn. It is 100% cotton and what I found out about my knitting is that when I knit with cotton yarns, my tension is a lot looser. If I knit with wool or acrylic yarn, my tension is a lot tighter. So now I have to be more careful because some of my stitches are not as tight as others. And once I finish a scarf, I'm going to wash it and block it. And maybe the like stitches will relax and settle in and you can't tell that my tension was all over the place on that one but i am practicing on that and i also noticed that when i purl my tension is looser as well so all my knit stitches here are definitely tighter and then when i turn the scarf to purl um it's definitely looser so that's something that i need to work on so that's why i've been knitting a lot of projects because i need to practice with my tension and it's getting there but this scarf is turning out beautifully now it's not my favorite pattern um, to be honest I think that pattern is a little bit boring because it's just knitting one side and then purling the other um, if there were some yarn overs in there or something I think that might add a little bit of um, I was gonna say excitement to the pattern so that was my Berkeley scarf I'm still working on that and I should have it done hopefully by the next time um, you guys see me so the next thing I am working on is a pattern that a friend from work had asked me to make. And I don't know why I said yes, because now I'm regretting it. All right. So the pattern is for a Baby Yoda. And Omegarumis are not my favorite things to make. And I'm just really horrible at them. And I don't know, I just don't really enjoy making them, so I don't make them usually. I've made a few, like maybe a total of three, and this might be my fourth one. But this is what he looks like so far. He looks kind of weird right now because he only has one ear on and no arms and two legs. But this is what he looks like right now, and I'm just not liking the way he looks. I mean, can you imagine him with another ear and then arms and then his robe? I mean, he would look cuter when he's all finished, but for right now... I'm just really not happy with the way he looks. And this pattern is a free pattern on Ravelry. So if you guys are interested, go check her out. And I'm not a big fan of this pattern because she does not um, tell you where to sew in his legs. So my legs right now are crooked. And then she doesn't show you where to sew the arms in she does tell you where to put the eyes and the little embroidered nose and the ears though so that's good but i had to figure out on my own where to put the legs and like i said they're a little off like one's crooked and one's straight i don't know i might have to make another one we'll see um but his robe's gonna hide it anyway so no one's gonna see his feet and if my friend from works likes it then he can definitely have this one and we'll see we'll see how he turns out when i finish him I will work on him this weekend possibly and then get him done so that way I can give it to my friend at work on Monday. So that is that and this is probably my last Amigurumi. Um, after this I think there's no more no more for me. That's it. Like I said it's not my favorite thing to make so I'm trying that one and um, so far I'm not liking it but I will continue with it. And then the last work in progress I have is this eyeball pillow. So I am working on an eyeball pillow and I made one last year for Halloween and I showcased it in one of my videos. So this year I'm making another one and I'm actually going to show you guys how to do it. So as soon as I'm done, I'm going to film a tutorial. Hopefully I can get it done soon. Maybe by the second week of August, I can have it up so you guys can have time to make this if you want. But it's basically just a front panel, a back panel. You seam them together or you cro crochet them together and then you stuff it with either fiber fill or you can even buy a round pillow form um, to insert it in between the panels. But I think it's really cute. You can choose any color you want for the iris. But, you know, the pupils, I chose black and then I chose a purple iris and then the whites of the eyes in white yarn. And then I'm going to add red yarn um, to make 
like the veins for the bloodshot eye look. So that is my plans for that. And if you guys aren't interested, I will have a tutorial coming out soon. Um, hopefully in the next couple weeks, like I said, my life's been busy. So I really haven't had much time to crochet or knit, but this does not take long at all. All I need to do now is make the back paneling put in the veins for the eyes and maybe a little white part for the glint in the eye and that's it and then I'm done so if I really wanted to I can get this done tomorrow and then next week I can start filming the tutorial for it because I don't know if you guys know this but filming a tutorial is really hard work and it takes a lot of time you need just quiet and time to yourself and then if you mess up certain parts, you have to uh, refilm that. So it's a little bit difficult, but I will try my best to get this up for you guys if you guys are interested in that. So that is my last work in progress. And I want to talk about a couple things that I want to work on. I have two things that I want to start either today or tomorrow. I mean, I want to start everything today or tomorrow, but the first one is called... Boo. and this is a Halloween doily pattern and I saw this on Ravelry and it was a free download so I printed it out and I actually have one I don't know if you call it a skein but one skein of the number 10 crochet thread um, and that's what it calls for is a size 10 crochet thread and I think I will give this a try tonight i'll start it tonight it might take a couple weeks to finish because crochet thread is thin and um, hopefully it works out really pretty and i think i only need one uh, ball of the crochet thread and i think i have it i just have to look for it it's here somewhere and then um the other thing i want to work on is this cotton candy sunset beanie this is a pattern that I bought on Etsy for $5.50. So if you're interested in this, I will link it down below. I have not knitted up this hat yet. Um, it's on my to-do list and I will have it done soon. I did read through the pattern, so it's not that complicated. Um, if you know how to knit through the back loop and do yarn overs and knit two togethers, you should be able to knit up this beanie. And I still can't decide what yarn to use yet. That's why I haven't knitted it up. Um, here, I think she used like a speckled yarn, which is like really cute. Um, so I might look for some variegated yarn to knit that up with. I'm not sure, but that is on my to-do list and I will be starting that one pretty soon. So that is all I have for you guys in regards to my knitting and crocheting. Now I do have to announce a new winner for my giveaway that I had um, in July that ended on July 31st. And I picked a winner for that one, but she never contacted me or got a hold of me in any way. And that was Countrylicious Crochet. So I gave her, it's been a month and she hasn't responded. So I had to pick a new winner. So if you guys are ready to see who that winner is, I will insert that right here. So the new winner for that giveaway is Crochet A While. So Crochet A While, if you could email me at allthingscrochetandknit at gmail.com and send me your mailing address, I will send out that box of goodness to you sometime. I can't say this week because I've been working a lot of hours, but next Saturday I will run to the post office first thing in the morning as soon as they open up and I will ship out your box as long as you get a hold of me before then so email me at all things crochet and gmail.com and i will send you out your box of yarn so congratulations and i don't know if there's anything else that i need to talk about it's been a long episode um i did buy some fabric for i wanted to make some fall project bags and i bought a fabric that had pumpkins on it and i would show you but it's all the way on the other side of the room so i can show you guys next time i hop on um, but that's about all I have for you guys today. It's, I know it's been a long episode because I had a lot to talk about. I've been missing for four weeks and trying to um, gather my thoughts and collect myself. I have just been feeling a little bit down lately because of maybe all this added stress with the kids being at home, learning from home, and then also from 
my adult acne problems and I'm hoping to get that fixed pretty soon. So wish me luck on that. I'm just hoping I have clear skin soon in the next couple months. But thank you guys for sticking around this long if you have and I really do appreciate you all. So stay safe, stay sane, keep on crafting and thanks for liking, subscribing and watching my videos and I will catch you guys all in the next one. So have a great weekend, have a great night and just be happy guys. Bye.